during my early 20s. I worked as a meter reader in Iowa City, Iowa. A meter reader is the person who records how much electricity, gas, or water you've used each month. If your meters are on the inside and you want an accurate bill, a meter reader must enter your home whether you're there to let them in or not. Entering a home when the owner isn't present is something that I never got used to. No matter how loudly I knocked, I never shook the uneasy feeling that I wasn't welcome. The inside of a home is the ultimate private space. A home's exterior is just the image of ourselves that we project to the rest of the world. But the further you venture inside, the closer you come to truly seeing what kind of person lives there. And if you want the raw, unfiltered truth, head for the basement. I hate basements. I've seen walls that look like giant, static-filled TV screens until I realized it was roaches scurrying across a white background. Cobwebs so thick and dusty that it looked like the cotton candy machine exploded at the Spider County Fair. I've seen rats, snakes, feces, weapons, neglected children, abused pets, homeless squatters, massive hordes, bizarre sexual items, a makeshift meth lab, and even a coffin. There are rational explanations for all these things. Except maybe the coffin. But there was one basement where what I found was beyond the grasp of logic. And that's what made it so terrifying. It was an old apartment house. From the outside, it looked like every other house on the block. I entered the back door and found myself at the top of a staircase. I ran my hand along the wall until it grazed a light switch. I flipped the switch, but no lights turned on. I wasn't carrying a flashlight. A typical route involved five or six hours of walking, so I carried as little as possible. Oftentimes, I used the light from my handheld screen, but it only illuminated whatever was about a foot in front of it. So, armed with the world's worst lantern, I made my way down into the darkness. Once at the bottom, I blindly shuffled across the room, one baby step at a time. With arms outstretched and head down, I eventually reached the far side of the basement. I shined the dim light from my handheld along the wall and discovered two doors. Each door led into its own small room. I chose the door on the right and found the meters in the far corner. As I entered the reeds, I began hearing noises coming from the other room. Something was moving, and there was whimpering that grew louder the longer I listened. I eventually realized it was a dog. It sounded weak and distressed. I tried to open the door, but it was locked. At this point, the dog was scratching the other side of the door. I felt helpless. I reported it when I got back into the office, but I couldn't shake the thought of that dog. It stuck with me over the next month, until it was time to return. So, there I was, one month later, back within that basement. At least this time, I knew where the meters were located. I shuffled back to the little room on the right, while keeping my ears open for any sounds coming from the other room. This time, however, I heard nothing. I read the meters and started making my way back, but I couldn't shake the memory of that dog. Was it still trapped inside that room? My curiosity got the best of me. I stood outside the door for a few moments, listening. Still nothing. That's when I made a huge mistake. I tried to open that door. I had no more than jiggled the doorknob when I first heard it. Screams. Blood-curdling screams, unlike anything I'd ever heard. Sounds that I didn't think a human was capable of producing. Short, piercing, high-pitched shrieks followed abruptly by a low, drawn-out, guttural moan that ultimately morphed into something that I could only describe as crying. 
but much louder. It was all over the place, like some sort of psychotic, freeform jazz. I stumbled backwards, nearly losing my balance. I shouted something like, Hello? Who's in there? There was no response, just screams. Are you okay? Do you need help? Still no response, just screams. There was no doubt that I yelled loud enough for him to hear me. He didn't want my help. He wanted me gone. I fumbled my way through the darkened room, toward the exit. When I reached the top of the stairs, I just stood there, listening. I was trying to wrap my mind around what I was hearing. I waited for the screaming to stop, but it never did. When I finally left, it was still as loud and demented as when it began. I felt relieved, but that quickly vanished when I realized I had to do it all over again next month. I reported what I'd heard, but nothing came of it. As my return drew nearer, a sense of dread grew inside of me. What kind of lunatic sits alone in total darkness and silence? My mind created endless explanations for what kind of hell lay beyond that door. By the time I returned, I'd built him up in my mind so much that anyone other than the devil himself would have been a letdown. However, there was no sign of him the next month, or even the next several months. I'd nearly given up on solving the mystery when a stroke of luck pulled me back in. One night, I went to a concert with my friend Laura. After the show, I gave her a ride home. She'd moved somewhat recently, so she had to give me directions. I didn't pay much attention to where she was leading me, until she pointed to a house a ways up the street. I couldn't believe it. She had moved into the house with a mysterious room in the basement. Hey, this sounds weird, but have you noticed anything odd about the basement at this? I began to ask. But before I could finish my sentence, she blurted out, A crazy guy lives down there. Finally, I had confirmation. She went on to tell me that even though her apartment was in the attic, she often heard him yelling at night. But that wasn't all. She had actually met him. One day, while walking to her car, she saw him standing in the lawn. He stood perfectly still, with no expression on his face. He was directly in her path, so she cautiously made her way around him. She noticed he was staring at her, so she offered a friendly hi as she passed. He had no reaction, except for one unsettling exception. He stuck out his tongue then quickly sucked it back into his mouth and resumed acting like a statue. Thoroughly creeped out, she got in her car and drove away. Two or three months later, I finally met him myself. I entered the back door like I had so many months before. This time, something was different. There was a light on in the basement. I peered down the staircase. At the bottom, a ragged looking dog was staring back at me. It was the same dog I'd heard during my first visit. But then, I noticed something else. Behind the dog, I could see a pair of bare feet. The ceiling blocked my view of the rest of whoever was standing there. But it didn't matter. I knew it was him. I should have left right then, but I didn't. I know this probably doesn't make sense, but at this point, my desire to finally get some answers outweighed my fear. I shakily called out, Meter reader, and started to take my descent. As I made my way down, more of him was revealed. He looked to be middle-aged. His head was shaved, and his eyes were wild. He was wearing pants, but no shirt. What I remember most was how lean and sinewy his body looked. It had the look of a body that was never at rest. I explained who I was and what I was doing there. To my surprise, not only did he talk to me, 
but he actually sounded somewhat normal. The volume and pitch of his voice was odd, but he said the same sorts of things people typically said to meter readers. I even started to doubt whether or not he was the same man I'd heard screaming, but his behavior slowly removed all doubt. As I read the meters, he rapidly paced back and forth. He was constantly wringing his hands together and spastically cocking his head from side to side. The longer he talked, the more agitated he became. He began grimacing, and little verbal ticks started popping up in his speech. Every so often, he blurred out aloud, Ah! in the middle of a sentence. He was trying to suppress these sounds, but he was losing the battle. I started to make my way to the exit. He followed. His verbal outbursts grew louder and more frequent. I was petrified. When I reached the stairs, I drew our conversation to an end and said goodbye. As I turned to head up the staircase, he could no longer hold it in. Screams. The very same unforgettable screams that I'd heard coming from the locked room. I ran up the stairs as fast as my legs would carry me, flung the door open, and rushed back into the daylight. A month or two later, I had a couple of friends, including Laura, over at my place. I was excited to tell her about my encounter. But as I was relaying what happened, I could tell that something else was on her mind. When I finished telling my story, she told me about something she'd seen a couple weeks earlier. One day she noticed lights flashing out her window. She looked outside just in time to see police officers placing the man from the basement in the back seat of a squad car. She later found out from another tenant that he had attacked someone with a knife. That was the last we ever saw of him. I don't know what became of the man in the basement. I'd like to think that he got the help he needed, but maybe that's just because I'd rather not think about the alternatives. <laughs>